Hello, this is Ross, founder of Odyssey Espresso. Today I'm gonna to show you how to install an analog pressure gauge. Uh, this is also the same case for if you got a transducer or a gauge and transducer. So uh, as you're assembling your machine, you'll assemble the back two screws on your piston assembly, but not, so I should say the left-hand side screws, but not the right-hand side screws. So when your gauge ships to you, it'll have this, uh, what we call it push to connect fitting installed. So you can go ahead and just carefully twist and slide that off. And so what we'll do is we'll actually start by first removing this small uh, plug that's on the side of the group head. This plug allows you to use the machine without the gauge or transducer or whatever if you desire. So this is a two millimeter Allen key we'll use to get that off. We'll take our new push to connect fitting and we will thread that in. You'll thread it in by hand. Um, and actually I should have showed there's an O-ring on the back side that will seal. So if you thread this in by hand, that will seal totally fine. But if you like, you can use a two millimeter Allen key, insert it all the way in there and just twist. It's got an internal hex. And so that's locked in. So next up, you'll find uh, this is all pre-aligned before we send it to you. And these tubes have a small chamfer on the end. And so what we'll do is we'll take our finger and we'll push in this little push button. And uh, we will slide the tube in. And you'll find it'll kind of, you'll think it's all the way in, but it's not. And so once you get to this stage, let me actually get a, a side view for you all. You'll want to almost uh, shake it back and forth and sort of wiggle it so there's an internal O-ring. And the whole point is we want this tube to get pushed into that internal O-ring. So the chamfer on the tube helps lead it in, but you'll need to push it through. So I'll show it again. It'll be a distinct feeling. You'll insert it in originally, it's still kind of loose. So as you're shaking, twisting a little bit, you'll find it'll slide in like we just saw there. And so now what we'll do, let me twist this back around, is we'll slide, we'll use our fingers to help hold this tube in. We'll slide the gauge up over the clevis and you'll see these holes should line up on the top here. And so we'll grab our other screws. And these screws are designed to be uh, extra long, so you'll have plenty of extra threaded depth. And so with your included Allen key, you'll go ahead and just get the screw in the back started. This is the easiest to access uh, without anything in the way. And so then you'll take your front screw and you will drop that in. You might need to push the gauge a little bit and the bracket just to get it to line up. You'll see how it kind of slid in. And this one, it's, it's a little bit of a tight access, but you can get the key in and you can thread this all the way down. So those are nice and snug. Uh, so now you don't need all four screws to operate this. Uh, it can take the, the load no matter what. Um, so we don't, we don't have to be too crazy about threading these in. And yes, unfortunately, these won't sit flush with the top. There's not really a clean way that we can do a counterbore and still have our bracket. Uh, but you'll just uh, thread those in. You'll make sure this fitting on the side is, is snug, how it was before. Uh, and so because we're fully constrained up top, even though this is just sort of a slip fit into an O-ring, it is locked in. It's not going to come out. Uh, if it does come out, then something's wrong, so please contact us. Um, and so now that we've got it in, we're ready to pull shots and use our transducer and or gauge. Thank you.